Welcome back to Race Cars Universe and to episode 2 of my tour of the Italian car museums. Today we're in Maranello, a small town near Modena, known to many for its distinctive color theme and the historical importance it holds. Home to the most sought-after and racing-oriented automotive brand in the world, Ferrari. As we left off from the Alfa Romeo Museum in the first episode, we continue on the chronological timeline to see how the course of events led to new beginnings and innovation. Let's start with Enzo Ferrari's involvement with Alfa Romeo, which began in the 1920s, when he led their racing team and established Scuderia Ferrari within the company. Under his leadership, Scuderia Ferrari saw significant success in motorsport. Conflicts then arose between management leading to its departure from Alfa Romeo in 1939. Bound by a non-compete agreement, Enzo couldn't use his name in racing for four years. At the end of this period, in 1947, he officially founded Ferrari, producing both race cars and road-going models. Ferrari also maintained a fierce rivalry with Alfa Romeo, notably in Formula One. Enzo's departure from Alfa marked the beginning of an iconic automotive legacy that persists to this day, embodying excellence, performance and innovation. In his own words, the future is always in the hands of those who know how to envision it. Let's get on with the tour and get a real taste of it now, shall we? Here we are guys, finally. First car here is a 250 LM from 1963. Crazy to think that Le Mans cars used to look like this back then. Beautiful shapes, beautiful lines. We can see here a complete body as well. And at the same time here, a more contemporary comparison with the uh, 812 GTS. It's very own aluminium body shell as well. We enter here the next session kindly renamed supercars with the history of the holy grails of Ferrari and so we start off here obviously with the GTO an incredible design really wide wheel arches iconic interiors still reprised in today's modern cars by Ferrari just beside it, my future car, the F40. V8 twin turbo, super lightweight. The last one that Enzo Ferrari was able to put his hands on in terms of designing. And project coordination. What an amazing car, guys. And then the F50. My dream car when I was a kid. A roaring V12 under there. Probably not the fastest car today, but a serious weapon on the street nonetheless. That's the V12, equipping the F50. Okay. Here we find the other two, actually three, iconic masterpieces 
di Enzo Ferrari o Ferrari Enzo this car came out broke actually shattered all the records currently held by all the cars such an incredible engineering feat the engine you see there is actually this one here a truly monolithic gigantic V12 twin cam unbelievable that's a really big engine I can tell you that and then here the Ferrari La Ferrari starting with the Enzo they uh, implemented the the gullwing opening doors you can see here they're latched into the, the roof and especially this model has got a really big carbon tub full dry carbon you can't see it now but when the doors are open it's actually pretty visible And then here, the more extreme racetrack oriented uh, version of the LaFerrari, the FXXK Evo. Now, the cool story about this is that you cannot actually own it. You would pay millions of euros to have one of these cars kept by Ferrari, and you can't just have it. They will take it to the racetrack, Whenever you want to drive it, they will service it. You would have a pretty much like a pit crew operating it and servicing it. And then once the race is over or the track day is over, you fly back where you came from and they keep the car. So that's a different, I don't know, way to see race car ownership. I strongly disagree. I'd like to have it in my garage if I pay millions of euros, but I guess exclusivity does have a price in the end lots of uh, carbon parts bezels things here and there you can see it's all about aerodynamics pretty cool shark fins what an incredible masterpiece of engineering yet again here at the Ferrari Museum and this is the engine of the LaFerrari, another V12 clearly, this time hybrid with an additional uh, unit here. It's pretty cool to see the exhaust headers are actually ported six into one into six. Pretty cool. There's a huge alternator. If it is an alternator. This is a dry sump oil pump system right there. Pretty cool porting on the exhaust headers. And that's the uh, as I call it the tractor unit because <laughs> it looks like looks very industrial. So that, that produces 120 kilowatt or 163 horsepower the electrical motor for a total power output of 960 horses should be plenty isn't it and after this section here we proceed with another really really impressive car F12 to the front Really cool color combination. Really dig the uh, the interiors. TDF can be distinguished from the uh, stock F12 by these three slashes, three stripes on the bodywork. Beautiful car. Honestly, though, I would still take the A12 of this. 
very nice car but 812 is better <coughs> up next as you can see that the crowd is gathering around here this is a one-off car that was produced I think for a Japanese collector or something it's not even in production stunning P80 very outstanding to see all the uh, production pictures and projects and sketches of this P80 which I'm sure you recall the shape of it that inspired the uh, SF90 as you can see here that really looks like an SF90 that's the interiors the roll bar the cage I took this project to the next level and turned it into the uh, SF90 And then the legendary test track Fiorano. It's the 50th anniversary, I mean, at least it was last year. And here we have the 150 LM. It seems to be some sort of a Le Mans version of a uh, 458, 488 car. I've actually seen a few videos on YouTube about people spying this car driving around the area here Massive spoiler it Looks like it uh, doesn't have much design cues as per every prototype I can see two huge fans possibly to extract heat so that it doesn't reveal what's underneath it that's how they do spy cars now very cool what a monster eh and here a really cool F430 GT3 Man, I'd love to hear this one. Rowdy ass. <laughs> so after this sensational room here, celebrating the 50th anniversary of Fiorano, we access the Victory's Room, the most outstanding collection of memento memorabilia items from the good old days especially for me these one belonging to Niki Lauda is significant value and also Michael Schumacher for me especially these two being an 80s kid are two very important race car drivers but then of course John Surtees, Phil Hill, Hawthorne, Fangio and Ascari and all the trophies as well huh, I just noticed them now look how many that's what's special about Ferrari they won so much that everyone wants a little piece of their victory for themselves that's why everyone wants to drive one all the winning cars from Ferrari 1980 and then 1996 1999 you can already see the difference in aerodynamic wings and additions to the bodywork and then the year 2000 
we start to see a bit of white coming up in the racing colors compared to the previous version and then 2001 more white this time on the sides this is the beginning of the winning streak that will lead Ferrari to the top of the world with Schumacher driving it more colors more aerodynamic solutions for this 2002 version and then 2004 and 2007 there you can see the striking difference within just three years from one to the other you can really catch all the differences between the two models the incredible front nose very compact design Again, lots of wings everywhere. Compared to the 2004 version. What a beautiful area here in the museum. With the engines here as well. Starting from uh, 2007. V8. 90 degrees. 2003. V10, 90 degrees 850 horsepower versus, versus 750 and then 2002 with the uh, another V10 840 horsepower just look at this thing man wow incredible and the 820 horsepower V10 still in 2001 the V10 era was the most sensational from a performance and also from an entertainment point of view. What a sound. Even Lewis Hamilton regards this period as the best in F1 history. Bring back the V10s. We surely hope so. Still very compact. If you think about this is a V8 putting out just a little over 750 horsepower this one can really fit into any car so lightweight noble materials used you can tell again stunning area here at the museum we we'll continue here with the more historical classic I would say part of the tour it's amazing the way this car is actually started from quite boxy tiny wheelbase car here this 166 Berlinetta Vignale with all the historical facts and figures here on the wall Amazing. And then a 340mm, this thing was doing 280 kilometers an hour in 1953. Imagine that. Look at and then here, the 268 SP. This one was doing almost 300 kilometers an hour in 1962. You can tell it's so streamlined. With the uh, curious rear view mirror just popping up like that. <laughs> Very nice. And also, something going on there. That pipe looks like a. Uh, it's probably the fuel, oh yeah, it is the fuel tank linked together by that pipe down there on your feet, imagine how safe <laughs> man, look at those trumpets that's amazing, eh? <laughs> wow with the uh, iconic ducktail something that, something that probably Carol shall be copied from and then the cherry on the cake, guys the 330p4 
Now, I'm assuming this being an original one, as we are, after all, in the Ferrari Museum. So this must be a real 330p4. The legendary Le Mans car. Unmistakable shapes and design with the Prova <laughs> decal there in the back. More than a 36. What an incredible, what an incredible car, guys. I don't know, to sound quite speechless. This one was actually partaking at Goodwood back in 2017, so I am pretty sure it's an original 330p4. And after that sensational 330, we have a Ferrari Indy car from 1986. Think about it, same age as me. V8, 2.6 liter. 700 horsepower that this looks really raw looks like a raw beast that needs to be tamed and as i can see here it's a turbo you can see the turbo down there that's how it can make 700 horsepower from a tiny 2.5 liter back in 86 And here, the 2018 Ferrari F1. Look at the amazing amount of uh, aerodynamics, uh, wicked things here and there. Even here, look at that. Unbelievable. Every single piece of bits and pieces of aerodynamic counts. <coughs> This is already with the halo for safety. Incredible floor. The wing. It's like a sculpture. It's hard to explain. Like unless you're li literally here witnessing. It's a twin turbo. You can see the two waste gates. Uh, exhaust there. It's very, very hard to show you guys on the video, but the aerodynamics is just next level. Even here, at the entry of the wheel well, there are bits and pieces that contribute towards the aerodynamic grip. Including those ones as well. The sides here are just fabulous. Look at this thing. Very, very hard to show you guys on a video. Hopefully, you're getting a bit of an understanding of how insane and crazy this is. I mean, after all, it's all about winning, isn't it? Even has a wing on top of the halo, as you can see. <laughs> Unbelievable. Incredible. And here we have something curious, guys. The evolution of the Scudetto, as we call it. The little shield that was carrying the Ferrari logo, starting in 1923, and then moving forward throughout the years. You can barely notice the subtle differences. Into one, two thousand five, twenty ten, a single piece, prancing horse, sheet metal. I really like the eighty five one, <laughs> of course. Really cool. I like it. So this pretty much concludes the uh, the tour of the Ferrari Museum here in Maranello. You gotta remember that there are two museums now. The Enzo Ferrari Museum is in Modena, 
and where we are right now here is in Maranello which is literally a stone throw from Modena anyway you can see here the SF90 the F8 Tributo and the Ferrari Roma with the uh, V12 engines here very cool I love the exhaust and another iteration of it here 800 horsepower this is probably the one that, that's equipping the 812 super fast here we have some uh, racing driving simulator we can test it's actually pretty cool Wow, there was plenty to see and feel. A true statement to perseverance, branding, racing culture and real heritage. We're now moving to the next part of my trip involving another very famous manufacturer. Yep, you guessed it, it's Lamborghini. As many of you know now, thanks to the movie release, Ferruccio Lamborghini approached Enzo proposing a great partnership only to be told off and to keep making tractors instead. This sudden dismissal fueled Lamborghini's determination, pushing him into crafting his own line of top-tier sports cars as a response to Ferrari's insult. But that's for another day. If you enjoyed this video, hit the like button and consider subscribing if you haven't already. This is Andy from Race Cars Universe. I'll see you at the Lamborghini Museum. Bye-bye.